Hello, Raven. Thank you for doing such great work. I hope you're having a great start to the year. I am, though it's March, so I'm not sure if it's really the start anymore. I thought about sending you this story, but I needed to check my facts with my sister beforehand. This was in the early 90s, and I don't remember why my sister and I were home alone. My sister was around 14 years old, and I was 11. At this time, we lived in a small town in the Pacific Northwest, and we were bored. We decided to take a walk. After leaving a note for my mom, we took off. Now this town was about 20 houses at most. The only thing it had was a post office. There was an old school that was overgrown, but had a basketball hoop that was still standing. We walked past the school, and made our way to an old rail crossing. The tracks had been removed, but it had not gotten overgrown yet. We followed the old trail deeper into the woods, and caught sight of a rock wall that looked easy to climb. So we decided to climb up and see what we could see. The climb was taller than we thought. It was only about a hundred feet or so, but it was steep. I think it was a hill that the rail company had blasted out of the way. This left a rugged cliff that was pretty sheer. The old drill holes left us a way to climb. They had rough edges that we could grab. This made the climb seem easier than it really was. As we were going up, my sister had knocked a rock loose that hit me in my face and knocked my glasses off. I had wanted to stop then, to at least get my glasses, but my sister just said that we would get them on the way back. At the top of the hill, we realized that it was the edge of a plateau, I guess. It was a flat spot that had been cleared by logging. It's hard to explain. From below it looked like a small hill, and that we would get a good look of the valley. Instead it was a foothill of a small mountain range. This flat spot leading to mountains in the distance. There were no trees left standing. All the trunks were grayed and decaying, the undergrowth had run rampant, vines tried to catch your feet, old sticks covered holes in the ground. It would have been so easy to turn an ankle or break a leg. We wandered for a while and noticed it was getting dark. We needed to get home. I think we were already late. Our mom was going to be worried. We hadn't marked our trails, so it took some time to find our way back to where we came up. Looking around was hard for me. Without my glasses, anything outside of three feet was blurry. When we made it back, I was trying to find a place to climb down, or at least where we climbed up. When we couldn't figure it out, my sister suggested jumping. Without my glasses, I couldn't tell if it was a really long way down or not, but I was not going to jump. We stood there and argued for a time. I finally told her, jump if you want, I'm going to find a house and ask to use the phone. I started to walk away, afraid that my sister was going to jump. She was headstrong like that, but she followed. I had a hard time in the dark. Neither of us thought to bring flashlights. Eventually we found a house with lights on. Apparently, either people went to bed early around here, or it was mostly vacation homes. I was almost ready to try to break into a house, just to use the phone. My sister took the lead and knocked on the door. A nice woman answered the door. She wouldn't let us inside because her daughter was sick with a fever and she didn't want to pass it on to us. So she brought out her phone. She even wiped it with alcohol before handing it over. My sister left a message for my mom, she was out looking for us, and handed the phone back. The woman asked if we were able to get a hold of our mom, and my sister said no. The lady asked us what we wanted to do, and I said, If you can point us to our town, we'll start walking. I didn't think we could be that far from home since we walked here. When I told her what town we were from, she was shocked. Apparently going over the cliff and through the flat rise took us about 25 minutes from our town by car. The road back had to go around the rise and then double back to get to our house. 
When we said that we would start walking, she objected. She went back inside real quick and checked on her child, and she then told us that she would drive us home. The lady was so nice. She left her sick kid at home to drive us lost kids home. When we got home, our car wasn't in the driveway. But not five seconds after, our mom pulled up. Mom was so happy to see us. Apparently, she had been out driving the route we said we were going to use in our note. From what she said, she had been driving on the shoulder at like five miles an hour trying to find us. Not only that, but our little lapdog Holly, who was the size of a cat, was sniffing the air and barking like she smelled us. My mom would stop the car and get out to let Holly try and find us. She'd been coming back every so often to check the phone or see if we made it home. So, when we were standing in the driveway, she rushed to hug us. After exchanging some words with the lady and profusely thanking her, Mom let the lady leave. The next day, we went to look for my glasses, because we couldn't afford to buy new ones. When my sister saw the cliff and how high it was, she looked at me and said, I'm glad you talked me out of jumping. When my mom heard this, she looked mortified. You thought about jumping down? That's like a hundred feet. In reality, it was only about half that. It's still enough to seriously damage or kill us. At the base of the cliff, we found my glasses too. They only had a small scuff on the metal where the rock had hit them. Anyway, thank you for reading this, Raven and I'm a huge fan of your work. This happened the summer that I turned 15, and I learned a pretty strong lesson, a lesson that's etched into my very bones, and a reminder that sometimes you should just mind your own business. Being a teenager, I thought that I was invincible, and that I would never be confronted with the horrors of the world. Scary things only happened on TV and whatnot. Obviously, anyone can experience scary things, but it's probably important to highlight that I had this dumb, invincible mentality as a 15-year-old girl, which, I would say, made me way more vulnerable than a lot of people, and some of the things I did were incredibly stupid. This was one of those stupid things. My name is Riley, and back then, my whole world was a small town cradled in a lot of forest and state preserve that hadn't yet been turned into shopping centers. That summer, I landed a pretty decent summer job at the only diner in town. It's not relevant, but I loved that job, because people knew that I was a high schooler and they tipped super well when I told them that I was trying to save up to buy a car for my 16th birthday. I was hired on to the late morning to afternoon and early evening shift, so I had to be there typically by 9am. Obviously, I didn't have a car, and both of my parents worked, so I typically walked or cycled to the diner. When I walked, I would typically go down a path in the woods because it was quicker, and there was a lot of wildlife to enjoy. I would take the trails until they got to a small railroad track, and then take a left to follow the track to the diner, which was right next to them on the main road. The whole shortcut took about a half mile off of my trip, which, to a 15-year-old, is a lot. I took this trail for about two weeks, which I guess lulled me into more of a false sense of security. Nothing had happened yet, so nothing would happen, right? There were a few times while walking the trail that I felt like I was being watched, or like somebody was nearby, but I never saw anyone, so I gradually convinced myself that it was a deer or something like that, and I was just being paranoid because of how secluded and quiet the trail was. Again, nothing could happen to Riley. Then, one day, that illusion of seclusion and safety shattered. I was walking the path like normal, when I paused because something looked out of place. 
for more than 14 days, I did this walk on the trail and nothing had changed. Then there was suddenly something different. Off to the side of the railroad track, a few feet away, was what looked like a lawn chair with a backpack sitting in it. I know now that I should have just kept going, ignoring the chair and the backpack, but I was curious as to why someone would have left a backpack by the tracks like that. I took a second to think about it, and I figured I would look into the pack, justifying it by saying that I could see if I could find an ID in it and return it to whoever owned it. Surely that was the right thing to do. I say now with very heavy sarcasm. So, I stepped over to the backpack, and I unzipped it, thinking it would be full of someone's paperwork or clothing or something. Boy was I surprised when I found it full of several tightly wrapped and taped bricks of a white powder of some sort. I now know what it was, yes, but at the time I was sitting there thinking, who put a backpack full of powdered sugar on a lawn chair in the woods? I didn't touch any of the bricks, I just stared at them for a second and tried to piece it together. My thoughts were then broken by the sound of footsteps behind me, and the feeling of something cold and metal being jammed against the back of my head. If you've never had a gun pushed against your scalp, it's a strange feeling that you instantly recognize as a gun. It's kind of hard to explain but it's almost like the feeling of a gun barrel is an instinctual trigger in your brain. Like you just know that it's a gun and that you're about to die. As soon as the gun hit my head, I threw my hands up and yelped, only for a hand to go over my mouth. The person behind me was very quiet and meticulous as he spoke. Do. Not. Scream. You scream. You die. I nodded softly and he moved his hand away and then continued. What's your name? I told him that my name was Riley and that I didn't mean to touch his stuff, that I was just stupid and curious. He ignored my comment and asked me how old I was and to this day, I cannot help but laugh at my stupid answers. I told him that I was 15 and then rambled on that I was going to be 16 in October as if the fact that I was going on 16 was going to mean anything else. He gave a slight chuckle and then said, Okay, and where do you live, Riley? I told him that I lived at the end of the path and that I was just walking to work. He cut me off and said, No, address. I want your address. I wasn't sure what to do, but when you think you're about to die, you tend to kind of just go along with it. I told him my exact street address and said that it was a bright blue house, like it really mattered. He then replied with, Alright, Riley, I now know where you live. You look like a good kid, a, a smart kid, and I can understand that you were curious. It was a mistake, but I think this is a good educational moment for you so I want you to listen to what I tell you and really understand it, okay? Despite the edge and aggression in his voice, I remember that he almost sounded sympathetic, like he felt sorry for me being in this situation. I just nodded in agreement, and he then finished his side of the conversation. You're going to keep walking forward, you're going to go to work, and you're going to live your day like nothing ever happened. You will not turn around, you will not look back. If you look back, or I think that you even got the slightest look at my face, I will kill you. You were never here, you never saw the backpack, and this morning never happened. Do you understand? I once again nodded emphatically, trying to convince him that I was more than willing to do what he was asking. Okay, good. Good girl, Riley. I'm also going to need you to promise me that you aren't going to go to the cops about this, or tell anyone that might. Because if you do, I will know. And I know where you live. 
I'm also going to have to ask you to not take this trail for the rest of the month. Until the 1st of July. After that, I don't care if you take it again. But until then, you find another way to work. Do you understand? When he said this, I actually spoke and said, Yes, sir, I understand. He gave a slight chuckle, and then told me that I was going to be okay, and then told me to go, and to remember what he said. I absolutely remembered, and there was no way that I would literally ever forget those words, because I knew right then that he was completely serious. He would come to my house if I told anyone about it, and I wasn't going to risk it. I didn't look back, I didn't turn around, I kept my eyes forward and walked down the track to work and just lived as normal. I don't know who this man was, I never figured out who in town it could have been, and honestly, I prefer it that way. I'm fine with never knowing. I never told the cops, I never told my parents or my friends, I told no one about this until I was much, much older and had moved far away from town. I learned a very valuable lesson that day, the main one being that minding your own business is a big deal, and if you decide that you're not going to, it could lead to a gun to the back of your head. I'm strangely grateful that this guy realized I was just a dumb kid, and that I had made a mistake, because he could have easily pulled the trigger and dumped my body, and I would not have been found for a couple of days at most. It's strange to say that you're grateful that the person threatening your life decided you weren't worth the bullet, but that's where I ended up with my experience. I used to live in a small town in Michigan that was surrounded by forest. The woods were literally our backyard playground sometimes the backdrops to some strange and unnerving experiences. I've seen UFOs, I've seen creepy people in the woods, and maybe someday I'll write those out, though some of them are pretty basic and uneventful. This experience is also kind of uneventful, but it was weird and I figure it's worth telling because I seriously have no idea what I saw. One afternoon, on spring break, I was incredibly bored, which happened often as a 16-year-old. I was bored to the point that I was thinking about things, and I recalled my dad once telling me about a cave that he and his friends would hang out in and get stoned. My dad was the hippie type. I'm not. But I am into wilderness and wanted to check this cave out to see if it was still there, or if it had collapsed, or whatever. Again. I was a bored teenager and figured I would kill time if nothing else. I only had a rough idea of where the cave was, but I figured I was well versed in the art of hiking, so I would find it eventually. So there I was, in the deep woods with the sunlight gleaming down on everything and making it a bit warmer than it had been all week. It was eerily quiet out in the woods, but I kind of liked the seclusion. So, I pressed on. After a couple of hours, I hit a point where I figured I would find Bigfoot before I found the damp cave. So I took a minute to sit on a stump and eat my sandwich that I'd packed for my lunch. While I was sitting there, just staring out into the woods and gnawing on a ham and cheese sandwich, I heard this strange rustling coming from down in a ravine near me. It was a pretty shallow ravine. It looked like it had been dug up and left for whatever reason, like someone was going to expand a sewage line in this direction and just gave up. It was pretty wide, like it went on for a while, but it wasn't too deep, maybe five foot at most. I figured the rustling was a deer or some small animal, and I was curious so I went to check it out. I crouched down to be small and quiet as I could and walked over to the edge to see if I could spot it, thinking I was going to see a deer or a raccoon or something like that. What I saw though, 
I have never been able to identify. This thing, whatever the hell it was, slinked out of a small brush in the ravine, and then stood up. When I say stood up, I mean that it was crawling on all fours, and then stood up on two and started walking normally, almost human-like. It wasn't very tall, maybe two feet at most. It was covered in fur that looked kind of matted, I guess. It looked rough, like it had mange or something like that. When it stood up, I noticed how long its front arms were. They were the length of most of its body, and it looked like they were not part of its normal anatomy. They were thin, bony, whereas its legs and midsection were thicker. It had what looked like inch-long claws at the end of each of these elongated arms. The head was even worse, and more out of place. It looked almost reptilian. It was flat, featureless, and it had some fur, but if I had to place it, I would almost say that it had the head shape of an iguana, or a bearded dragon. Nothing about this creature looked right. I sat there and watched it over the edge of the ravine, trying to figure out what kind of chimera this little beast was. I watched as it reached down into the brush, and it grabbed the dead carcass of some small animal, maybe a rabbit or squirrel, and it started eating it, bones and all. It just sat there devouring this seemingly long deceased animal, and I couldn't help but whisper, what the hell is that? This is right about the time it perked up and looked back to notice me. The screech this thing let out was mind-numbing. It sounded like a three-year-old child screeching for their mother. It was high-pitched, loud, and it sent this disgusting chill down my spine. After it screamed, it lifted its arms and actually threw what it was eating at me. It threw the carcass in my direction. I then watched as it got back down to all fours and took off at what I can only describe as an unnatural speed. I ran back to the house, the whole time trying to figure out what kind of messed up, freaky, mutated otter I had just discovered. But otters have faces that are cute and distinguishable, and they don't have long mouths like that thing did, and I don't think they eat dead carcasses. I know raccoons are scavengers, but there's no way this thing was a raccoon. Its arms were way too long and the head was just… wrong. I'm thankful that it didn't decide I was a threat, because if it had rushed at me with those claws, I don't think I would have gotten away unscathed. If anyone has seen this thing up in Michigan, please let me know. And if anyone has seen it anywhere else, well then that means there's more than one of these, and that's a terrifying thing to consider. I made this account to post here. Anyways, this happened around, like, 2021, and sometimes I still find it hard to grasp. For context, I now live in a different place, and along with most of my relatives, so I feel safer saying this on here. The reason I'm posting this is for people to learn and possibly caution themselves from my experience. I'd say the place that I lived in was just pretty old. It wasn't densely populated nor empty. It had wooded areas around it. You could cycle to the mall, school, and other normal places, but you would have to take a car to go to places like the hospital. I was basically in my last year of high school. Being an only child and a girl on top of that made my parents overprotective, and I was naturally more cautious than the rest of my friend group. I didn't really mind being that way though, because I always thought that that was the better option. So teenagers from school would have these outdoor get-togethers in the woods a few kilometers away from the school. It was just common for people to lounge out and about, chilling until 3am or something. Including me, it was a group of four. They decided since it was our last year that we should probably drink together in the woods. Obviously, looking back, 
stupid freaking idea. But it wasn't unsafe. And it wasn't deep in the woods either. There's a pretty clear trail and a small openish area where people would like to get their dogs and whatnot. We planned to do it on a Thursday because my parents would be out, and the rest would convince theirs that we were having a sleepover. Now, we bought the alcohol and some other stuff to just chill out. There were no others that day because it was a weekday, and quite chilly out as well. It was pretty lively. You could see the houses from the distance, and people would be driving around as well. So, naturally, we felt safer. We walked on the trails for about one minute when I felt uneasy. I felt like we were being watched or something like that. And I looked over to one of my friends. She looked a little distressed, but we just shrugged it off. We walked only a few minutes more and found our spot. We started drinking and basically spent like one hour and approximately 30 minutes of gossiping and having those deep talks while being drunk. I didn't drink too much, and neither did my other friends. We were just a little tipsy. Now, we forgot about the brief weird feeling we had felt while walking until we heard something from the thick trees in front of us. Even though we were loud, we all heard it. It was this weird snicker slash giggle. I got up from this tree log that I was sitting on and dragged my friends back a little. We had a fire going and two torches, but still really couldn't see into that area. It wasn't that close to us. Think around four doors away if you placed them horizontally. So, the fact that we heard that laugh was just insane to me. I pointed the flashlight straight into the area and no one came out. I sat back down, and when I turned the flashlight off, there was a silhouette coming out. I switched the flashlight on to blind that person, while my other friends did the same. We started yelling and getting ready to run when I saw the most horrifying sight of my life. It was this man who we had never seen before. He had this plastered on smile, and his hair was covered in dirt. He was pale, and his eyes were almost like he was not looking at us, but just in our general direction. I can't really explain it, but it was just textbook creepy. We all ran for it. My very drunk friends even managed to snap out of it. We got to my house, I lived the closest to the place, and said that we would call the cops. We were absolutely scared of our parents, but it didn't matter. We called the cops, and they found nothing. Word got out and people pretty much stayed away from the paths at nighttime, and a couple of the guys in our school managed to get their dads, and all with guns, to find the guy. But nothing ever came of it. Fast forward to like, one month later, we didn't talk about it much and never did anything like that again. I got a pocket knife and a pepper spray to keep. I went home after school and was exhausted, so... I decided to take a nap. My dad was at work, and my mom was visiting her sister. I suddenly woke up to this weird sound. We only had one story, and the walls were not too thick. I locked all the doors, and even the windows out of habit. Still, fearing for the worst, I locked my room door and kind of looked out my window. There was nothing. I grabbed a bat and my phone heading out of my room. I looked at all the doors, and everything was locked. There was like this weird shuffling outside of my house, and I looked out through the window of my living room. I kid you not, it was the same dude from the woods. He was just outside walking in this erratic, eerie way, which sent me into a spiral. He somehow saw me and started saying, Hi there! very loudly. I called the police, and after that, I told him to screw off. Then he started saying my name and all of my friends' names. The police came and questioned him. He has no history of mental illness. He had no clinical disorder, 
and after enough torture, he confessed to, quote, liking young women. He's in jail now. Probably will get out in a couple of years. Edit. And by torture, I meant interrogation. My dad has a friend who's a cop, and the cop told him that the guy would scream when they asked him things. He was also guilty of attempted essay and harassment, but that's all that I know of. So that, my friends, was some terrifying in-the-woods stories. Stories where the scary things happen, surrounded by trees. If trees could uproot themselves and walk, we would all be in horrible danger. Imagine the things trees could do. Imagine, if you will, a world where trees walk. I believe those would be called Ents. Or if you're playing Don't Starve, they'd be called Tree Guards. Anyways, good stories, uh, stories in the woods, always amazing, always amazing, always fun, always interesting, always intriguing, and always scary. So, thank you to everyone who submitted their story to me, and those of you who let me use your stories on Reddit. Without you, these stories wouldn't uh, be on my channel, obviously. Yeah. And of course, thank you to you, that's right, you, for listening to this point. If you got to this point, you're an amazing person. Don't forget it. Hopefully you enjoyed the stories. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button as it helps the channel tremendously. If you're new and liked what you heard, consider subscribing as that does also help the channel. I do true scary stories at least three times a week, typically Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So if you like that schedule and like these stories, you should definitely do that subscribe thing. And if you want early access to them, you can join Patreon or channel memberships to get that, that access. You can also go down below the video and leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts, how you're doing. Have you ever had a scary experience in the woods? No? Let me know. You can also go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and submit it my way. I will read it in the video. In a video. Not this video. Clearly, this video is over. But anyway. Yeah. Well, that's it, friends. Hope you're having a beautiful day, a beautiful rest of your week, and I hope you're doing well on this exact moment. Um, until next time. Remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, my friends, much love, and sleep well.